my brother, my dear sister, it is very, very important for you to understand that the call of God upon your life is a servant job. Yes, it's a servant job. And it's a servant job to do all he can to make life better for others. To free them to be everything they can be. And a servant first interest is not himself but others. And so servanthood is a loving choice we make to minister to others. It is not the result of coercion. Or coercion is more some type form or probably manipulation. And so when God needs servants to do it Jesus' way, sometimes it takes a sudden unexpected twist to make us focus. Why? Why do you think it is like that? Why? Because we are so busy that our days are a little more than distracted, disjointed, agendas. Yes, we have to admit it. Because we are in a chaotic world. Most of us are overscheduled with obligations and overloaded with text messages, emails, news, podcasts, advertising, and constant interruptions in our lives. In our lives. And we all know even Jesus in his ministry had some moments where it seems his life is crowded with a lot of people who need healing. Who need healing. Who need healing. Not only that, he also has to deal with the Pharisees. Jesus knew the Pharisees were there for hostile reasons and not to get help. Often such hostility is clear. Jesus has a lot of stuff to deal with. But in the midst of that, he kept his focus on his father to lead him through. Beloved, the chattering of the world around us is a consistent buzz in our ears. Like tonight house. You see, our father's generation talked about being workaholics. Our generations talks about suffering from chaos addiction. Let me put it that way. How then is God to get our attention? I mean, the clamor. And it's amazing how the Lord worked in the Bible to arouse his people, especially when they were going the wrong way, he pulled out all the steps to arrest their attention when they become distracted, lethargic, or rebellious, or when he just wanted to spend time with them or commission them for a new assignment. Beloved, if he did so, then why wouldn't he do the same now. Why wouldn't he do the same now? Why wouldn't God do the same now? And that is why we need humility. Because humility provides the answer for us. We are not God. So we can quit trying to be him. And in our Finiteness, trying to 
run away from him. And we have to be honest about ourselves and recognize that we are not running away from him. Rather, it is the Lord wanting, wanting to use us to do extraordinary stuff to glorify his name. And through that, we too, we are honored in his presence. Beloved, let us pause for a moment and, and consider how proactively God wrought biblical attention getters that made his people step, I mean stop and notice. We all know that even in driving our cars, there are traffic lights that from time to time will put a stop on us to refocus again and then move forward. Stop and notice. God startled some people with the appearance of angelic beings. He bewildered others with unexpected miracles like the ten lepers. He sent storms and famines like when he was with the disciples. We all know the fire that came from heaven, Elijah and the Baal prophets. We know how donkeys talk when Balaam was trying to do stuff against God's will. How he spoke and wind seized when he was with the disciples on the boat and the sea. God, at a certain point in time, also raised up prophets, charismatic kings, and peculiar preachers. Most often, I do ask myself certain questions about how people encountered God. And to my shock, I realized how even at times God can ambush, let me use that word, can ambush certain people. He deemed that they have to continue on his covenant obligations. Therefore, he ambushed Jacob with a wrestling stranger. We all know Genesis chapter 32 and 24. And then he startled Moses with a burning bush. Exodus chapter 3 verse 3 says that then Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn? Yeah. Why the bush does not burn? I imagine the children of Israel looked at the parted waters of the Red Sea, crashing down on the Egyptians and thinking in Hebrew, well, that just happened. It doesn't happen that way. In Numbers, God sent a temporary plague of leprosy on Moses' sister Miriam and got her attention. He got her attention. That is Numbers 12.10. At a time when Israel, the word of God was so rare, rare, rare. The word of God was not active in the nation Israel. The Bible says, in someone's day, he sent tender and rain at harvest to startle the people into humble submission, especially when they demanded the king and set God aside. 1 Samuel 12, 18. What about the vessel that God loved so much? The Lord got David's attention with a convicting story from the prophet Nathan. 2 Samuel 12, 1 to 4. And it will surprise you that in the year that King 
Uzziah died, Isaiah suddenly saw the Lord sitting on his throne, high and lifted above. Isaiah never got over that moment. Isaiah 6, 1. Yes, he never got over that moment. Because it has been prophesied, woe unto you, woe unto you from Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, until he got to chapter 6, when Uzziah died. That is where God revealed his prophetic mirror to him. And then at that point, he came into contact. He had an encounter with what we call the fear of God. The fear of God. And then at that point, Isaiah chapter 6 says, Woe unto me, a man of unclean lips. My God. Isn't that humility? Then in Isaiah chapter 31, verse 8, King Ezekiel's attention suddenly read focus on the Lord at the onset of a terminal diagnosis. The Lord got Jonah's attention with a storm. And what about King Nebuchadnezzar? The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar's attention with the fourth man in the furnace and Peter's attention with a rooster and Paul's attention with a bright light on the road to Damascus or Damascus Road. My dear brother, my dear sister, in time of your comfortability, such as you find yourself, the question is, are you getting attention from God? Maybe you seem to say it's just happening. But it doesn't happen that way. What about the jailer of Philippi? Was awakened at midnight by an earthquake. Acts 16, 25. And the apostle John was startled by a series of revelations on the island of Patmos. Revelation 1, 9 to 10. Beloved, the many ways God worked in the Bible to break through the stubbornness or distractions of his people so they could see him afresh is so amazing. Even some, somewhere, sometimes, he used defeats, disasters, diseases, blessings, angels, animals, visions, dreams, and sometimes even phenomenal in nature. He sent prophet, preachers, priests, and kings. On one occasion, he even caused the sun to stand still in the heavens. Joshua 10, 13. On another occasion, he simply spoke in a still small voice. 1 Kings 19, 12. So can you think of similar times in your own life when something happened that suddenly refocus your mind on the Lord? What does it take to get your attention my dear brother my dear sister what, what, what does it take to get your attention and some of you I know a passage of scripture that certainly came alive to you or a sermon that greatly and amazingly convicted you Or maybe a book, some of you, you are intellectual enough to read many books, but a book that falls into your hands just when you need it. And probably some of you thought the admonition that you received from a friend is just something that happened. Now, or a streak of bad news, or a visit to the doctor, a breakthrough sky at sunset. My dear brother, my dear sister, it is time for you and I to learn how God breaks through our stubbornness, weakness, and awareness to reach us and to teach us. What does it take to get your attention? What does it take? Proverbs 4.20 says, 
my son, give attention to my words. And Hebrews 2, 1 says, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Beloved in Christ, friends, what does God need to do to get our attention? What does God need to do to get our attention? It is time for you and I to understand and accept the fact that God still uses supernatural means and ways, a variety of ways to get our attention and how he still speaks to us today. It is important for you and I to understand that is real because you know and I know that it is clear in scripture that spiritual attention getters responded to God's call how are you responding to God's attention to you and on you think about that thanks for hearing thanks for listening and may God give you the spirit of discernment to understand that the eye of the Lord is still on and with you. To look over his word and then perform his performance through you. Have a blessed day and bye for now.